first. Thank you. Well, when you showed up at my doorstep in the middle of the night last night, I... Well, I guess that's what friends are for. Right. Here. Thanks. Now, what else would you like? Um, some more sleep. <laughs> Failing that, I'll take some coffee. Water's boiling. Oh. Where's Calvin? He left for work already. Oh. What time is it? About ten. Oh, Dee Dee, my goodness, you should be at work. So should I. <laughs> uh, no, what I should be doing is getting your coffee. Oh, you've been so awfully nice to me, and I've been so awfully awful to you. I apologize. <laughs> well, if you can't be awful to your friends, who can you be awful to? Right. <laughs> I told you last night that I'd uh, lied about having a boyfriend, didn't I? But you didn't tell me why. Hi, Mrs. Saxon. Don't tell me. You're here for exclusive photographs of the living legend at home. Come in, Jeremy. I'll give you a tour of the place. Well, actually, that's not why I'm here. Uh, but I am glad that you can let Nancy and I do the articles on you. I still can't imagine who'll read them. As long as they look at the pictures, huh? <laughs> I assume you're here to see the Night Raider. Yeah, I wanted to tell her what I thought about the premiere of a radio show last and night. And what did you think? Well, I thought she was dynamite. The music was... Uh... I chose the music. Oh. Jeremy, I think it's just fine that you and Shelley are back together again. But please don't say anything that will make me revise that opinion. <laughs> I think I heard her stirring. I'll go and check. Okay, thanks. Jeremy? Yeah. Is that you? Yes, it is. Hi, morning. Uh, I've got morning breath. Oh. What are you doing here? Well, I caught your show last night. I just wanted to tell you, I thought you were very good. He said he thought you were dynamite. Did you listen to the whole thing? Well, except for the music. All night? Yeah, I did. Well, then how can you be so wide awake? I don't know. Come on, you know me. I don't need much sleep. I hate people who don't need much sleep. The music is fine. It's Jay's. Well, we'll discuss it. And how was I? It's not open for discussion, and you weren't bad. That means she loved me. Listen, where are you going so early? I'm going to see my nephew. Mrs. Saxon, um, what do you mean it's not open for discussion? I mean, just that. Okay, so the studio receives four or five phone calls complimenting you on your work, mm -hmm. which is really weird because there's no way anybody can know that you work there. Besides, nobody thanks the... It's all right. You don't got to say it. It's all right. Generally, nobody thanks the engineer. You're damn right they don't. Then somebody breaks into your apartment, which is also weird and also too much of a coincidence. Would you just relax? I mean, you remember last time we did something like this? We almost bought it in an old warehouse playing detectives. And I told you, next time something like this comes up, we're going to take our business straight to the men who wear the blue suits and let them deal with it. But personally, I think whoever broke into your apartment has something to do with those phone calls. What do you think? I think you should just relax and take the summer off. I didn't see you calling the police, Mr. Law-abiding citizen. Come on. Oh, believe me, I will. It's just that I don't know if the phone calls and the lock picking are the same thing. Now, all I know is that whoever made those phone calls knows what hours I work. And that's like putting a sign on your door and saying, buddy, you can just come anytime you want, take what you want. Yeah, but nothing was missing. Well, see, that's what I can't figure out. Now, if those phone calls are connected with last night's break-in, why? I mean, who's out there? Yeah, what do they want you for?
know, if we were having this meeting four or five months ago, I would think that you're here for a rent collection. Yeah, or to throw you and your wife in jail. <laughs> right. <laughs> Actually, now that you seem to have gotten the detective bug out of your system, that won't be necessary just yet. Just yet? Well, what's that supposed to mean? <clears throat> well, I understand you're planning on leaving the country in a few days. That's right. My wife, Raven, and I are going to uh, Switzerland on a business trip. Hmm. Alicia Van Dyne and Logan Swift are going with you, is that right? No, they're not going with us. I'm flying my own jet. I assume Alicia is going to take her plane, and Logan, I imagine, will be on a commercial airline. Why, why all the interest in a simple business meeting? Well, I wouldn't call it so simple. For starters, the father of the woman you're going to see has been missing now for over two months. Well, yes. I am the one who insisted that Swift tell the police when we discovered that he was missing. I'm aware of that. Secondly, a former employee of yours, Les Grafton, has been murdered. His murder remains unsolved. Well, Detective, it may surprise you to know that I am aware of that fact. I'm sorry about Grafton, but I still fail to understand how this all uh, relates to my business dealings. Well, it relates very well. Frankly, our chief suspects in his murder are Ms. Van Dyne, Logan Swift, and you. Lies. Oh, they seem to be growing in direct proportion to my new wardrobe. Well, you look great. No, I don't, and I feel worse because I am a liar. Beth, do you know why you feel compelled to make up this, this new guy in the first place? I guess it started because I wanted to avoid Miles questioning me about the new wardrobe. I mean, he asked me why I was dressing differently. And what was I supposed to say? Oh, I'm dressing differently because of you? So, so I made up this other man. But why, when Miles was the purpose behind I it? Oh, maybe I just should have said that I write Miles and Beth forever all over my notebooks. <laughs> <laughs> you do. Oh, I do. So, in any case, one night he asked me out to dinner. Now, purely to discuss a patient that we shared, mind you, but still, technically, it could have been called a dinner date. So, what do I do? The cool professional? I panic. I say, oh, no, Dr. Cavanaugh, I'm sorry, but I have another date. And he says, oh, with another guy? And I... And I say, yes. And suddenly the lie grows. Suddenly this new man has his whole history. I mean, he's this doctor, and he works at the free clinic, and... Oh. I mean, you don't have to be Freud to see through that one. And now I'm in so deep, I really... I don't even know how to get out. Why not try telling the truth? What are you afraid of? I mean, you worked so hard to get Miles to notice you, and now that he does, you backed away from I know, I know. But do you know why? I'm afraid I can't tell you that, Dee Dee. I hate the idea of somebody breaking in here, even if they didn't take anything. Well, babe, it's not exactly number one on my top 40 chart either. You got any other suggestions? You can change the lock. Right. Well, we'll deal with the locks later, right? Let's get back to the phone calls. All right, now, the phone call you got was a guy who sounded like he had an accent from Maine, right? Now, Beth had a guy who sounded had no accent. Now, I had a guy who called up, he had like a Russian or a European accent. Now, how many guys think are involved in this thing? I don't know, maybe we're just stringing too many coincidences together. Calvin did say that friendly phone calls aren't exactly harassment. Hey, but baby, I'd like to pick my own friends. I mean, why would a dude bust his back and break in my apartment and not take anything? Mm. Wait a minute. What? Did you see these? I read them, if that's what you mean. I did forget to take them home, but Beth gave them to me to help me learn how to screen the phone calls, get different kinds I of I know what's in these things. I read them. I got some of my own. You see, these are yours. I got your name on it. Well, what's wrong with that? Beth told me I could keep them. I know. You left them over here yesterday morning. You see, when I was having lunch, I took them and I put them back in the drawer. So? So? How do they get back from here to right here? Huh? Did they grow legs and walk over there? that I'm a suspect in a murder case? 
Well, you said that you were sorry Les Grafton was strangled, yet I happen to know that shortly before he was murdered, you fired him rather abruptly. <laughs> what kind of a monster do you think I am? Look, I don't jump for joy when someone dies, whether it's an enemy or not. Les Grafton was an industrial spy. He was hired by Alicia Van Dyne to steal secrets from me. When I discovered that, I had him fired. I didn't have him murdered. Can you give me any information? No, I can't. Hey, hey wait a minute. Your department isn't going to try to keep me from leaving the country. No, we haven't got enough evidence for that. But, you know, I would appreciate it if you could give me a copy of your itinerary. Yeah, I'll do that, as long as you're acquiring the same thing of Alicia Van Dyne and Logan. Oh, I will be. You know, I really am sorry to disturb your business negotiations, but I've got a murderer to catch. Well, I, I wish you luck. If there's any information you can give me, please do me a favor and share it with the police, okay? Detective, I'm a licensed private investigator. I'm required to do that under law. Glad you remembered that. I uh, sincerely hope you don't think I'm opening this door for you. Mr. Wagner, I understand that your bookie is out on parole. Oh, well, congratulations, but uh, I don't gamble. <laughs> oh, hello, Mrs. Saxon. Now, here's a real lady. Okay. Detective Egan. Mrs. Saxon, I'll be back later this week for that itinerary. Uh, better yet, have your driver drop it off at the precinct. He knows where it is. Uh, everybody's a comic. Hello, Skylar. What brings you here, Geraldine? I have been very upset and disturbed over your behavior the other day. I was hoping for some sort of explanation. True, this was my second breakfast of the day, but this one was definitely more appetizing. Well, I told you that I was a good cook now. Hey, where are you going? I gotta go to work. What? Jeremy, you don't plan on leaving Shelley right now, oh. do you? I have to. You do? Don't I? Mm -hmm. No, no, I, I really do. I have to go to the newspaper, the new articles on uh, Geraldine. Well, who better to give you the lowdown on her? I can tell you the hours woman keeps, all the wild men she hangs out with. Yeah. Uh, speaking of newspapers, why have you had this one tucked under your arm? Oh, this one. Yeah, um, funny you should ask that. It's one of these uh, East Coast trade papers. Oh, yeah? What about it? Yeah. It's a funny thing. You're in it. What'd you do? Dig it out of the archives? No, no. It's the current issue. Are you serious? How can that be? The play already closed. I don't know. Something like uh, ex-starlet turns DJ. Wait a minute now. Only I can call Shelley Franklin a has-been, Jeremy. Give me that. Come on. All right, all right, all right. Ooh, what page is it on? Page five, and you're not a has-been. They gave you two, two columns. Yeah. Two? Yeah. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Hey, what's the matter? You've seen your name in print a hundred times. Come on. Oh, yeah, but after that stupid play... Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. My partner wrote that play. Oh, yeah, sorry. But it's ironic. I mean, then the first thing the trades mention is me being a DJ on the late-night show at WEON. Yeah. Well, I'm not complaining. I mean, I'll take whatever I can get. Yeah, well, it's a... It's a pretty flattering article, and you know what? You deserve it. Yeah. Okay, well, I gotta be going. Now, keep the paper. Yeah, thanks. See you later. Sure. See, they didn't forget about me. I'm not a has-been after all. Just tell me why you lied to Miles. I refuse to answer on the grounds that it might incriminate me. I'm not cross-examining you. Oh, no. No, I'm just concerned. Besides, you are under house arrest until I find out. Oh, Dee Dee. I'm serious. I really don't want to talk about it, all right? Aren't you the one who always told me if you have a problem, talk about it? Did I say that? Yes. Then I agree. Wonderful. <sighs> I should talk about it, but not to you. I have a problem, okay? Yes. And you are my friend. Yes. But this time, you're not qualified to help me. Okay, then who is? Juliana Stanhower. Who? Juliana Stanhower, my shrink. <laughs> you have a psychiatrist? Oh, yes. Most analysts are analyzed on a regular basis. 
That makes sense. Well, if we weren't, if we didn't have an outlet, most of us would probably go bonkers. <laughs> In any case, Juliana is it for me. She was my mentor at college, and she's been my friend and analyst ever since. Good. Then will you please go to her and tell her your secret? I don't have to tell Juliana my secret. She already knows it. Skyler, obviously something is bothering you. You came to see me to discuss it just the other day. Unfortunately, we said some rather harsh things to each other, and I, I regret that deeply. You may remember that our conversation was interrupted. Now, what is it? Geraldine, Raven is upstairs, so why don't we just postpone this conversation at some further time? We can talk in the study if that worries you. If I had wanted someone to take notes of this conversation, I would have hired a stenographer, Gunther. Uh, Mr. Whitney, uh, this is just a racing form. Yes, sir. He wouldn't open up to me either. Then it isn't my imagination. You are laboring under some sort of burden. It's just business, Charlie, that's all. Oh, my dear boy. I run a television station, several businesses, a theater, and a radio station. Now, admittedly, they're not always fun and laughs, but at least I don't walk around as if I were in mourning. Obviously, all of this has to do with, with Raven, or you wouldn't question me so closely about our conversations together. Now, what is it? Geraldine, since when did you get your private investigator's license? You know, that fresh mouth isn't going to make me stop. Well, when I did come to you, you didn't tell me much, did you? There isn't anything to tell. Raven and I talk about the future, that's all. She's absolutely ecstatic over the prospect of giving you this baby. Oh. Well, who's, who's the one who's being tight-lipped now, Skyler, girl? you must tell me what's troubling you. I guarantee it'll make you feel better. Geraldine, I really think you ought to leave now. And why this sudden attack of self-pity? What is it? Geraldine, I've had rather a severe shock lately, and I'm trying to get over it as best I can. I don't know at this point what that's going to make me do. I just don't know. You must let me help you. No. Very well. But when you are ready to talk, Skylar, I'll be waiting. So we're not really getting anywhere playing uh, armchair detective, right? Ah, oh, now you're talking. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Here I go. Deja vu. I know I'm going to regret all this. No, you won't. Come on, what's your idea? What's my idea? Well, I think I better call the DA right now and tell him to reserve us a room with three hots and a cot because he's definitely going to lock me up for my idea. <laughs> but that's what I think we should do. We should record some of those phone calls. Now, it's easy to do. We might get a lead onto something. Is that legal? Well, we do it all the time at Mind Talk. Well, okay, yeah. Uh, do you think one of those men are going to call back? You bet they're going to call back. See, whatever's going down is not done. And this is the, uh, the beginning of something. <laughs> Juliana, it's Beth Carell, and I have to make an appointment. Mm -hmm. Yes, it has been a long time, and I'm sorry. It is urgent, though. Yes, it does have something to do with that. I've... I've met a man, and I love him. <laughs> um, because of that, things are coming to a head, and I need to make an appointment with you. <laughs> oh, that would be fine. Thanks, Juliana. Thanks. Better get going. Mm -hmm. I call the room service. Stay here, okay? Who is it? Richard Smiles. Hey, Doc, I didn't know you made house calls. Yeah, some of us still do. Is Jody here? Hi. 
Joey, I just got a telephone call back at the house from a man with a Spanish accent. He could be a Mexican, I don't know. He wanted you to know what a wonderful person you are. Can either of you tell me what's going on? Uh, Mr. Wendy, don't worry. I'll get it. Whitney Residence, uh, Jonathan Wagner here. Uh, who is this? Uh, sure. Mrs. Whitney? Uh, Mrs. Whitney, uh, there's a man on the phone here, but uh, he won't tell me his name. Swift, and they're meeting in his hotel room again.